Hey everyone, so I'm back with another racket playtest. And as I promised in my previous ones, my aim is to make these playtests unique so they're entertaining for you to watch, as well as giving you lots of information. Today, I'm gonna to be testing the brand new Head Extreme lineup, specifically the Pro and the MP. As you can see, I'm in a beautiful little club in Paris one week before the French Open, and Head have come along to bring their Trackman device, which you might have seen if you saw my speed and my boom test in Austria. The Trackman device tracks my ball speed, ball spin rates, and ball placement, so I can compare the rackets against each other, not just in the same lineup, but I can also compare them to the speed and the boom lineups too. So stay tuned as in this video, I'm going to show you around the new extreme rackets, show you what the data tells me, but more importantly, tell you exactly how the racket feels to play with. Let's get into it. So first up, I've got to quickly show you around the new cosmetic as it certainly pops. Like pretty much every previous iteration of the Head Extreme, Head have gone with a fluorescent yellow colorway. So if you're already a Head Extreme user, you're used to these bright colors. However, this one is another level. You can compare this to the new Head Boom's alternate colorway. If you think back to the previous Head Boom and the previous Head Extreme, the bright feature colors of the racket being fluorescent yellow and this turquoisey blue used to be tamed by a darker, more muted color. But this year in 2024, Head have highlighted this color by adding a lighter shade of it, really making the racket stand out. And so if you like bright and funky colors, then the 2024 lineup is quite exciting for you. And you can only imagine what the new Head Radical is gonna look like in the coming months. Aside from the new paint job, there are two main changes that have been made to this new Head Extreme. One being the new grommet and bumper strip. They're made out of a different material, which is not only transparent, allowing the colors to pop through, but they're also a slightly softer material than the previous iteration, which actually gives a slightly softer feel on impact. In fact, the team from Head had told me that they had done blind testing with around 30 different players and coaches to compare the new grommets and bumpers to the previous iteration. And over 90% of these testers felt that the new material made a positive impact to the feel that the racket had overall. Along with this, Head have obviously introduced their new Auxetic 2.0 technology, which generally across all of the rackets, again, makes for a more comfortable experience and more feel. If you watch my review of the new Head Speed and the new Head Boom, you'll know that I preferred the feel of the 2024 versions. It's subtle, but it definitely makes a positive difference. The final difference in the new Extreme lineup is that the Tour has been renamed Pro, in line with Head's other lineups. They've kept the specs with a 98 square inch head, a 16 by 19 string pattern, and weighing in at 305 grams unstrung. The MP has also kept its existing specs with a 100 square inch head, 16 by 19 string pattern, and weighing in at 300 grams. Anyway, enough about the tech and the specs. Let's get to the important bit. Let's see how the rackets play. First up, I hit some balls with Ben from the Tennis 101. If you don't know Ben, he makes very aesthetic tennis videos with cool drone shots and different beautiful tennis venues all over the world. You can check out his stuff over on Instagram. When hitting with Ben, I started by using the Pro, as this is closer to the weight of the racket that I normally use, but it has a smaller head size, so that's something to contend with. You may have seen that I reviewed the 2022 Extremes a couple of years ago, but to be honest, I haven't hit with them much since, as I always seem to be drawn back to my beautiful speeds. But when hitting with these, I instantly remembered <coughs> how much I loved testing the Extreme Silo. The rackets have a lovely feel, easy to play with, and most noticeably, my shots were all landing very deep with little effort. I did find, however, that when I started to up the speed of my ground strokes, my balls were sailing long. This was, of course, fixed once I consciously added topspin to my strokes, which is where these rackets really perform at their best, as they're so good at creating that much-desired arced trajectory that you see all clay court specialists create with ease. It's always something to consider when you're testing a different racket, is to give yourself a little bit of time to get used to the racket. As I'm so used to playing with the Head Speed Pro with the 1820 string pattern, moving on to this more open string pattern definitely took a while to get used to. I mix between the Pro and the MP and would say that I noticed that with my game style, the Pro gave me considerably more control. However, when changing the way I played to hitting with more spin, the MP definitely performed better. At least it felt that way. 
During this practice, you may have noticed a few people <laughs> over by the net post while we were hitting. Well, one of them was multiple Grand Slam champion, Barbora Krejcikova. The cool thing was she eventually came onto court to hit some balls with me, which was incredible. We hit some gently up and down the middle. Uh, she wasn't due to be training today and she was wearing her running shoes, but it's always an incredible experience when hitting with pros as you see how easy they make it look. After we hit some balls, she had a go with the trapping device. Barbora hit her inside out forehand, aiming for good net clearance before I had a go at the same drill. In this exercise, the trackman was tracking our ball speed, spin, trajectory, and placement. We'll see our results very soon. Barbora had to leave shortly after that, but I continued to test my flatter down the line forehand and my kick serve. I did all three tests using both the Pro and the MP to compare like for like. I'll also share how this data compared to my speed and boom tests from Austria. So that's the playtesting done. Pedro's going to collate all the data and send it over to me. So let's fast forward two weeks and see how I got on. So we're two weeks on from my playtesting and Pedro has kindly sent me the data and Head have really kindly sent me the new extreme. Well, not quite. It's a little bit smaller than the ones you saw me playtesting, but it's a nice touch. This is how it compares to the old version. Now, before I get into the data and show you through some of the shots that I was hitting, I will say that you should always take this data with a pinch of salt. If you saw my speed and my boom reviews, you'll have seen that the testing was done in the most controlled way that we could, with a coach feeding a similar ball every single time and me having the intention to hit the same type of shot every time. But the coach at the other end and myself are human. And so there are always gonna be slight differences between each shot. I found this data super interesting nonetheless, and I hope that you will too. So first let's talk about my inside out forehand, which is the shot that you saw Barbora hitting before me. Out of the shots that I hit, the pro was 8.7% quicker when it came to ball speed. But when it came to hitting with the MP, I was generating 31% more revolutions on the ball, which is honestly crazy. I will say that I did miss a few balls long with the pro, which is what I hit with first. So when I went over to the MP, I was imparting more spin on the ball consciously to make sure that I was getting that ball in play. However, hitting with over 3000 revolutions per minute is pretty extreme. In fact, the interesting thing is you can see a big difference with the spin when you look back at my head boom and my head speed testing. Even when you look at my results when I was playing with the 107 square inch head boom team. And so if you're a player that wants to prioritize spin when it comes to choosing a racket, then the extreme silo is definitely the one for you. You'll see comparing my results to Barbora's results, she actually hit the ball faster than I did and more accurately, but she didn't hit with as much spin. You'll actually tend to see that a lot in the women's game. In fact, you'll often see that women's ball speed is faster than the ball speed on the men's tour. However, generally speaking, men tend to hit with more top spin and arc trajectory. If you're interested to find out why that is, drop me a comment below. Next up were my flatter down the line forehands. And in these results, you can see that the pro and the MP were very, very similar when it came to ball speed and spin, but it was the MP that won on both counts very, very marginally. You can see that the boom and the speed performed slightly better when it came to ball speed on those flatter shots, which isn't surprising to me. And if you are a player that plays with flatter ground strokes, then maybe those silos are more suited to your game. Finally, it came to my kick serve. And this was honestly where I saw the biggest benefits to using the head extremes. After hitting just two kick serves, I really felt a big difference in the amount of spin that I was getting on my kick. As you know, I normally play with the head speed and I hit kick serves for my second serves quite often. And so I could really, really feel a direct difference when using these rackets. And it really showed in the data too. With the speed and the boom, my best average spin rates were around 3,100 revolutions per minute, 
whereas with the extreme I was over 3,800. And when comparing the Pro to the MP, just like hitting the topspin forehands, the Pro offered more power and control, whereas the MP offered more spin. So the cool thing with all of this testing that I did in Paris and in Austria, the results really, really did match up to the way that I felt, which, as I mentioned at the start, you should always take this data with a pinch of salt. But the fact that the data really matched up to the way that I felt gives me great trust in it. In summary, the Extreme is a really, really good racket for those that are looking to either add more spin into their game or players that already use spin and want to maximize it. Generally, players that are playing on a slower surface like a clay court or a slow hard court are really going to benefit from this type of game style. Whereas I would say if you're a player that has flatter, more traditional strokes, you might be more suited to a different racket. As much as I absolutely loved testing out these head extremes, I managed to play really well with them once I changed my swing path to impart more spin on the ball. I always tend to go back to my head speeds. I'd say in the way that I play with slightly flatter strokes, I actually lost control when using the head extreme. However, I gained that control back once I added more topspin into my strokes. On the flip side, if I was a player that liked to hit with heavy topspin, I think I'd struggle to get the depth and the weight on my shots if I was using my head speed. And so with all of these racket reviews, it's not a case of how good the racket is, but who it suits. As I mentioned with the other 2024 Auxetic 2.0 rackets, they're a subtle difference from the previous version, but definitely a positive one. And so if you're deciding between the two and you've got the budget for it, I definitely opt for the Auxetic 2.0. It just feels that little bit nicer. But if you've got a tighter budget, the 2022 rackets are really good. And so maybe it's the colorway that will make you decide between the two. And so let me know in the comments below which of these two colorways you prefer best. And I look forward to chatting to you in the comments.